This is the mid-range device everybody has been waiting for. This is the all-new Samsung Galaxy A55. No, that's not it. That's the A54 from last year. This is the A55. They look similar, don't they? Looking at these two smartphones, it feels like the design team at Samsung took a vacation, resumed late and rushed over to make this. In this video, I'm going to check out the build quality, external features, display, performance, cameras and battery life of the all-new Samsung Galaxy A55 and compare it with the A54 from last year. Now starting with the most boring part of this video and that's the unboxing experience. Samsung, what's going on? Your smartphones only come with manuals and USB Type-C cable. Please return the charger for your budget and mid-range devices. Now beg with the beg. Moving to more exciting areas of this review, like the build quality, Samsung isn't joking around. The front glass has been improved, making it more resistant to drops and scratches, and the rear is made from glass. The materials used to make the frame of the A54 and the A55 are different. The A55 has an aluminum frame which makes it stronger and gives it this premium look. It does make the phone a bit heavier but that's nothing, the weight difference isn't something you're going to notice. As for the IP rating, nothing has changed. They are both IP67 water and dust resistant devices. Samsung, why did you let Xiaomi win the water resistant crown for mid-range devices? The Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus is an IP68 device which means it is better at resisting water. Now I will be comparing those two smartphones so hit the subscribe button and turn on post notification so that you don't miss out when the video comes out. Now moving to the external features, the first thing I notice is the sound quality. The speakers on the A55 sound better and louder than the A54 so that's good news. The SIM tray on both smartphones is hybrid which means it can either take two SIM cards or one SIM card and a memory card. Now here's something new on the A55, it supports eSIM which isn't available on the A54. The haptic strength on both smartphones is about the same and the speed and accuracy of the optical fingerprint scanner is pretty much neck to neck. The face unlock feature is present on both smartphones and the unlocking speed is the same. The display on the Samsung Galaxy A54 was very good, probably the best display of all mid-range devices last year. Now is the display of the Samsung Galaxy A55 better? Quality wise no. What Samsung did to improve the display of the A55 is they made it slightly taller as you can see. And they also kept the huge huge bezels. Why? Now aside from the huge bezels, there's nothing else to complain about. The visuals are superb on both smartphones. I mean they use super AMOLED panels and they have a resolution of 1080p. They're very sharp, vibrant and with a peak brightness of 1000 nits, the display is visible under direct sunlight. Now it's time to check out the performance. The Samsung Galaxy A55 comes with a new chipset, the Exynos 1480 processor. It's a 4 nanometer chipset and just like the Exynos 1380 processor on the A54, scrolling through the user interface is smooth. Multitasking is also great as both smartphones come with 8GB of RAM. Now if you're the type that mostly use social media apps, you're going to be fine with any of these two smartphones. They are really fast, so fast that you won't be able to differentiate them. For the Antutu lovers, this segment of the video is for you. I ran the Antutu benchmark test and the A55 has a higher score, which means the processor is faster. Moving on to Geekbench, the A55 is flexing its processing muscles and it shows that it's the boss with the higher single and multi-core scores. Running 3D Mark to see which chipset can run graphic intensive games better, the A55 scored higher. Benchmark applications don't tell the full story when it comes to performance so it's time to test out games on these smartphones. Now I remembered when the A54 came out, it ran PUBG and Call of Duty at HD graphics and high frame rate. For a premium mid-range device, that's unacceptable. But guess what? One year later, PUBG has been optimized and it's now running at HDR graphics and ultra frame rates. Moving to the Samsung Galaxy A55, it ran PUBG at HDR graphics and ultra frame rates. Game optimization is also plaguing the A55. For Call of Duty Mobile, it's run the game at low graphics settings and high frame rates. Again, this is nothing to worry about, the game will be optimized for this new chipset so just give it time. As for the A54, it's running Call of Duty Mobile at high graphics and very high frame rates. Now moving on to the new game on the block, Call of Duty Warzone, the A55 runs the game at high graphics settings which is the same graphics settings as the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. That's impressive. The game was unplayable and it just froze on me. Hopefully the game makers will optimize the chipset to run this game well. 
For the Android operating system, both of them are running Android 14. Samsung promised four years of major Android OS updates, and that will bring the A54 to get Android 17, and the A55 will also get Android 18 down the line. Now for some sad news, the A54 and the newly released A55 don't come with Samsung Galaxy AI features. So no circle to search and no AI generative edits. Alright, it's time to check out the cameras. Starting with the front facing camera, both of them come with a 32 megapixel selfie shooter and they look identical. Now, skipping to the next picture, again, it looks identical. Now, even if I zoom in, the details they show are identical. Facing the sun, the picture of the A55 looks a little bit warm and I like the way it shows the skin tone, so that's a plus. Guess what? When you go back to the shade, they look identical. Switching to this handsome YouTuber, I like the pictures captured by both smartphones. Portrait pictures look the same. Alright, so here's a video from the front facing camera of both smartphones. Both of them are shooting in 4K 30fps. Let me move the camera to the birthday girl. <laughs> so yeah, front facing camera test using the Samsung Galaxy A54 and A55. What do you guys think? Which one is better? Let me know in the comment section below. Now the rear cameras of the two smartphones come with a 50 megapixel main camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera and a 5 megapixel macro camera. For this picture, it was captured using the main camera. Although the Samsung Galaxy A55 shows the actual color of the statue, I actually prefer how it looks on the A54. I also like how the sky looks on the A54 better. Pictures of grass look identical. For pictures of humans, they also look identical. I have said identical a thousand times. Portrait shots look good. The A55 increases the saturation a bit. As you can see, our hair is a little bit reddish. Apart from that, they look... I'm not going to say identical anymore. <laughs> Now it seems like during the day, the A54 and A55 capture almost the same kind of picture in terms of sharpness and details and colors, but at night time, the A55 actually takes better pictures. The pictures captured by the A55 look sharper and it shows more details. Look at Mr. President. Mr. President, how are you doing today? <laughs> now both smartphones are shooting in 4K 30fps. Uh, let's check out dynamic range, that's the sun over there. That's not bad. That's not bad. And let's move on to birthday girl. So guys, 4K 30 FPS, which smartphone looks better? Let's know in the comment section below. All right, so let's check out the stabilization on both smartphones. So right now I'm jogging. Which one is more stable? She's laughing at me jogging. <laughs> Which one is more stable? Let me know in the comment section below. So as you can see, I'm sweating and that's because on the Samsung Galaxy A55, it has the dual video mode while the A54 doesn't. So yeah, that's a big advantage to the A55 if you're a vlogger. Yeah. Now after checking out the pictures and videos, I'm a little bit sad because I expected the A55 to do better. Yes, it has the dual video mode which isn't available on the A54. Yes, it takes better pictures at night, but I was expecting more. Anyways, it's time to check out the battery. They both come with a 5000mAh battery cell capable of charging at 25 watts. Now from my usage, the battery life on the A55 was actually better. Now when I began this comparison, both smartphones were at 100% and now the A55 battery is higher. Maybe it's because the chipset on the A55 is more efficient because it's a 4 nanometer processor or maybe because the battery on the A54 has degraded, I don't know, but the battery on the A55 seems to be better. Now after comparing these two smartphones, if you own the A54, there's absolutely no need to upgrade to the A55. Some games like Call of Duty Mobile hasn't been optimized yet. When it comes to day-to-day -day performance, you're not going to be able to differentiate any of these two smartphones. The improvement in the camera department isn't what the upgrade and the display quality of both smartphones are identical. 
So if you own the A54, save your money, you're not missing out on much. And if you don't have any of these two smartphones and you're thinking of getting the A55, I think you should consider getting the A54 instead. It's cheaper. Wow, we've come to the end of this comparison video. Thank you for watching till the end. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. It helps the video do well. So, I don't know. I'm going to see you guys very soon with more comparisons and reviews. Valor Reviews, signing out. Thank you.